Hey everyone, thanks for watching Bridgeport's Brightest Lights. In this video, I'm going to explain the differences between 20 and 40 frames per second, which one you should use, and which one I use in my light show. So, let's get started. Now, I don't want to be one of those people that drag on the video saying why well, you should do this, why well, you should do that, and not give you the final answers. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you what I use and what I think you should use. And then I recommend you watch the rest of the video so I can explain why you should use that one. And the option I choose might not even work for you in some cases. I use 40 frames per second in my light show. I recommend you use 40 frames per second in your light show. It just looks smoother. It's what I like. And there you go. If that's all you wanted to know, you can click off the video, go do whatever you want. Watch something else. And now to the few percent of people that are still watching the video, I'm going to explain why I choose that. And first, I'm going to explain what even 20 or 40 frames per second is, if you don't even know what that is. So, if you're new, when you go and make a sequence in x lights you can select 20 or 40 frames per second. And that is basically how often the data will be sent to the pixels or how often they can change. Now if you don't even know what frames per second is, that is basically terminology for cameras. So cameras record by taking pictures. They take a picture and they take many pictures very fast. Most cameras or phones do 30 frames per second, some do 24, but let's just say 30. That means 30 frames per second, that means they take 30 pictures in a second. So that's how you get frames per second. Frames can mean pictures per second, how many pictures it takes. Now some phones can even do 60 frames per second. So that means it takes 60 pictures in a second, which is a lot faster. And when it does more pictures per second, you can put things in slow-mo and they look better. Now you can get even higher. There's some fancy cameras that can do way more. I know GoPros can go 240 frames per second. So they take 240 pictures in a second which is a lot so if you had to decide how many frames per second you want when you're getting a camera you wouldn't want something that has 10 frames per second because if you were to walk it cut in and out as you're walking because there's not as many pictures being taken whereas with most phones with 30 it's smoother so now back to fps in excellent if you have it set to 20 frames per second that means every pixel in your light show can change 20 times per second. So you could have it flashing between red, green, and blue 20 times per second, which is already really fast. And then if you have 40 frames per second in x lights, the pixels can change 40 times a second. If it's 20 frames per second, that means every 50 milliseconds the pixel can change. If it's 40 frames per second, that means every 25 milliseconds a pixel can change. So that's basically frames per second in X lights. And when you create a new sequence, you can select one every single time. It can be different for each sequence, whatever you want. Now I'm going to get into which one you should use. And I'm going to start with talking about 20 frames per second. And I'm going to talk about the pros and the cons with it. So here are the pros. First off, your file size will be a lot smaller. So when you're choosing between 20 or 40 frames per second, obviously if you were to go back to when I was talking about cameras, if you were to take more pictures a second, that means you need more storage because you have more pictures. So if you're making the lights change faster and using 40 frames per second, you need more storage. But if you're using 20 frames per second, then the file size isn't as big. Now this used to be a big deal a few years ago because file sizes used to be huge for programming lights, but X lights has done a lot of stuff and the file sizes aren't even close to as big as they were back then. Another thing is render time is a lot faster. If you don't know what render time is, that basically tells and creates the file to tell which pixel needs to turn on when. Obviously when you're needing to render more pixels, because if you have 40 frames per second, you have double the amount of pixels, that's going to take longer for rendering. So 20 frames per second, the render time isn't as long. Now this can be a big deal if you have many pixels in your light show because render time can take a very long time, especially if you have a slow computer. Another pro is since the file size is smaller, moving the file around will be a lot easier. So uploading it to your Raspberry Pi will be a lot faster or moving it to an SD card to put in your controller or a computer, anything like that, it'll be faster. But usually I personally can't notice a difference 
when uploading it to a Raspberry Pi, they're usually the same time. But moving it to an SD card, that could be slower or faster depending on 20 or 40 frames per second, whichever one you're using. One other pro is it's the default FPS in x -Lite. So if you don't select it, it'll automatically choose 20. And since it's the default, every controller that I've heard of works with 20 frames per second. You don't have to worry about it. Whereas with 40 frames per second, most main controllers that I know of, such as the Falcon boards, sand devices, cult boards, and a few others, they can work with 40 frames per second, but there are some other controllers that don't sometimes work with 40 frames per second. So 20 is the default, and if you don't have a popular controller, and it's a smaller brand one, then 40 frames per second might not work on it. Now onto the cons with 20 frames per second. If you're using 20 frames per second, then sequences might not be as smooth. So like I said, if you had a phone that had 10 frames per second and you're walking, it won't be as smooth. This goes the same with lights. So when you're programming, if you have 20 frames per second and you have really fast effects, they can be choppy and not look as smooth. Whereas with 40 frames per second, everything is a lot more smoother because you can change the lights faster. Also, if you have seeing faces, they don't look as smooth like the other lights. You can put the mouth in sync and it will look okay but it can't be sequenced down to the millisecond, so it can be choppy. And another thing with sequencing down to the millisecond, you can sequence and have the lights change every 50 milliseconds at 20 frames per second, but if you go up to 40 frames per second, you can go every 25 milliseconds, so that's another thing, sequences can be smoother. So now I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of 40 frames per second. When you're using 40 frames per second, the sequences look a lot smoother, they look a lot nicer because you can sequence down to every 25 milliseconds. And every single effect that you would use in your light show looks either just as good as 20 frames per second or better. So 40 frames per second looks a lot better because it's way smoother. It works a lot better if you have fast effects. But overall, it's just my favorite and I'll explain why in a second. But first, I'm going to go over the cons. And there are a couple of cons, important cons, when using 40 frames per second. Now the cons are the opposite of the pros for 20 frames per second. Your file sizes will be a lot bigger, almost double the size. Render time can be double the time. Not usually, but it can take a little longer because you're trying to render more pixels. Uploading it to FPP could be slower if you have a slow Wi-Fi speed, but I, have, I don't have that, so I don't notice that problem. It is also slower moving it to SD cards. And 40 frames per second will freeze or cra make X lights crash sometimes if you're using it. I used to have a very slow laptop. And when I program the sequence in 40 frames per second, I'd have to save it every five minutes or so just so I don't lose it. Because if I have a big effect that moves pretty fast and was using 40 frames per second, X lights would freeze and just crash because my computer wasn't fast enough. But if you have a decently fast computer, that's not a huge problem. Another thing is back to what I said about some controllers not working with 40 frames per second. If you have kind of like, not, real, not really an off-brand controller, but not a popular one, it might not work with 40 frames per second, so you have to be aware of that. And then the last con, and this is probably a more important con, because I didn't know about this and I had a problem last year in the light show. When you have 40 frames per second, you can't go all the time to the max amount of pixels that you can have off of one port on your controller. My controller, I have the F16 V3, it can do 1024 pixels on one port. But if you try to do that when uh, you're running the lights at 40 frames per second, that can't work because the controller just can't push the data out fast enough. So by the time it gets to the end of the strand, there's new data already coming and the lights just won't work. They'll either flicker or just completely turn off. I did ask a question on Falcon Christmas about what the maximum amount of pixels you can use on an F16 V3 is. And most people said 680. I know it's a weird number, but that's as far as you can go. You can push the limit sometimes because all of the snowflakes in last year's light show were off of one part and that was 696 pixels. So that was an extra 16 pixels. It worked fine, I didn't notice anything. But the main thing is you just might not be able to have as many pixels off of one part. But with the newer controllers like the V4s, they fixed that so you can actually get almost ex the exact amount of uh, pixels off of a port even if you're using 40 frames per second. So, so far, it sounds like 40 frames per second has a lot more cons and you might be wondering why I use it. And it's because I notice every little part of the lights when they skip at 20 frames per second or when the effects don't look good. And that's why I sequence in 40 frames per second. My computer is fast enough to be able to render it in a decent amount of time. 
and I have enough space on my computer and I just think it looks a lot more smoother. So that's why I recommend you use 40 frames per second. But if you have a controller that only works with 20 frames per second or you have a very slow computer or not a lot of file space, I do recommend you use 20 frames per second because you don't want your computer to crash and then lose all of your work. So basically, if you have the resources, if you have the power, I recommend 40 frames per second. If you don't have a fast computer or you can't even notice the lights, if you think they look the same, then just use 20 frames per second. It will save a lot of time. Now, if you're not sure what to decide and you pick one but you think you're always going to be stuck using that one for your sequence, that's not the case. You can switch once you've made your sequence. I had a sequence where I accidentally made it 20 frames per second and I didn't notice until I was done. And then I noticed some of the effects weren't looking the best. And I realized I had it in 20 frames per second. And there's actually a setting in x Lights where you can switch it to 40 frames per second. Now I did say I'll talk about custom frame rate. And my suggestion is don't use it. Because it could cause a lot of problems. If you're using it, let's say you can't decide between 20 and 40 and you want to pick 30 frames per second, let's say. You can do that, but there's a lot of controllers that only work with 20 or 40 and don't work with custom amounts. When you do custom amounts, it could be even longer than rendering at 40 frames per second, even if it's smaller than 40 frames per second. And that's just because x Lights isn't used to that. And now you can technically go even more than 40 frames per second and make your lights go 60 frames per second. But that is way overkill and I did that once. My controller was able to handle it, but I didn't notice a huge difference. So I just recommend using 40 frames or 20 frames. Don't do any custom amounts. So that is it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully I helped you in uh, figuring out whether you should use 20 or 40 frames per second. If you did enjoy the video, it would mean a lot if you could leave a like and subscribe if you aren't already. We're almost at 900 subscribers and once we get there, we're at the final stretch for 1,000. Which honestly is crazy, I didn't even think it'd go more than 100 subscribers. If there's another type of video you want me to make that I haven't, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to make it if I can. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.